a story of how that caused this. So in this case, the primary issue is mould behind a cupboard. The cupboard was recently installed and there's a gap and that's part of the problem. The primary cause of mould is always excess vapour and I found a reason for that in the bathroom in that the extractor fan wasn't working properly. See later on in the video. But the where you have mould in more than one place, you know that it's just, it's not a local problem, it's a generic problem. It's made worse by past damp proofing treatment and because the wall won't absorb moisture as well as it would otherwise do. However, as I say, the key issue is the excess vapour. Have a listen to the survey. At the end of the survey, I'm going to have a look at the data loggers and analyse them and talk about ways of solving the problem over and beyond the work that I did during the survey. There's the same problem in these cupboards because yeah, that's external. There's or... not as there's not mould, but the my hat like my handbags were in that side and they got covered in it. And I had right. like some designer handbags and stuff that I just had to mm. <laughs> So well mind you it is surface generally. Um the yeah. reason you get it on handbags is handbags are marginally hygroscopic, so you will get it at lower relative humidity, but it's still the same thing. Yeah. Uh when it when it comes to mould. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to get it off in the corner, but what mm -hmm. you want to do is get rid of mould as soon as possible yeah. because the more mould you have, the greater so the dry. spore count and the increased risk of mould. Um, but So spray it with uh, HG uh, spray or something similar to that. I think we do actually have a mould spray because we sprayed in the bathroom just on the, um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, just on the windowsill. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, well, it's, it's good to get rid of it anyway. It's just, it's, look, the, the reality is every property in the world will have mould to some degree. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's the palace or the International Space Station. One of my clients was, uh, was in charge, yeah. Uh, and one of, part of the astronaut training is uh, mould uh, removal. No <laughs> way. I know, I know. No, no, yeah, it's everything. I'm sorry, I'm just going This one has been damp for a while. Anyway, it doesn't work. So the kitchen is... So the extractor fan has been switched back on and nothing, no, no flow. I'll just check with my finger. That's, how, that's what should be happening, but nothing. Well, it should be going a lot faster than that, but basically zero. So it's not going through. It's going into the ceiling void, I think. Just taking out the fan to see what's going wrong. There's way too much tube. I mean, really. should be should be ninety percent torque. The reason why is it creates a lot of um, resistance if it isn't taut. That's probably as tight. So if I just remove this, I'll probably solve the problem. Well, let's have a look. So I'm just going to cut it uh, about there. So taking off about a metre 
and that should work or at least a lot better than it is at the moment if you haven't got anything to cut it the easiest way is just to twist it, it takes a couple of minutes um yeah I can, i'm showing you one-handed but you obviously do it two-handed so it can be a challenge getting the plastic on but it's on anyway it's fine and so i've used um gaffer tape just to seal it up keep keep it from blowing off as well and uh and then we'll push it up and see if it now works. So the problem was I hadn't pulled enough out. There's another meter still in there. Uh, it's probably better if you don't have any. A few moments later. Oh, fifteen point eight. So. We're now getting three liters a second. It should be 15. The problem is this porcelain and also this is in the way as well. I don't think this will reduce it too much, but uh, I'm also, I'm not picking up the whole of this and I can't get my funnel there. I'm probably getting about half. So maybe it would be more like six, but it's, it's still the porcelain is part of the issue. So to explain what I'm seeing, I'm looking up in the void above where the extractor fan was placed and there's a, a ceiling void and what, what had happened is the whole of the two metres of um, extractor fan ducting was just shoved, shoved up into the space and obviously no air was going out. Now air can go out, but I think what's happening is there's also space that the air is being pushed into and probably coming out of things like light fittings and uh, around the, the place. So because the porcelain's in the way, it's reducing the airflow out and you're only getting about a, a third to a half of the airflow that you would otherwise be getting. So the two things that you need to do, one is replace the porcelain ideally with um, a, a vent with flaps. Uh, it's going to be difficult because the downpipe's in the way. Uh, and the other thing to do is to have, I think, a better type of ducting is a rigid metal ducting that's pulled taut. And you'll see that in other videos that I've seen. You also have problems with that because I don't think you're going to be able to get in a plastic ducting, which would be the ideal. So rigid metal will go a long way to solve the problem. Part of the concern was that there's some of these uh, very smart cupboards. Um, the shoes were going mouldy. Uh, and also on the other side of the wall uh, here, this was going mouldy. Uh, and this would be all from excess vapour. Apparently there's no concern about heat per se. Um, but then it's the vapour that's the issue and uh, that's mainly coming from the bathroom and dry and clothes internally. There's a dehumidifier. I think it's full because it's not working. Um, the capacity is 11.5. It should be 20 litres a day. Oh, sorry, it says 20 litres at 30 degrees centigrade. So in theory that should be okay. But, uh, is it full? That's not working at the moment. I think it just needs to be on. Uh, I would keep that running 24-7, uh, particularly when drying clothes. There's condensation there. And uh, this wall uh, is damp. And that will be why from condensation. It's a cold wall. It's not too bad. It must be well insulated around there. There's um, this air vent, but it doesn't do much good, really. There you go. So, do you see how? If you look up oh, yeah. here, so th that's external wall, the the right hand side, mm -hmm. and internal wall, the left hand side. So, yeah. uh, the front door is more or less in the middle at the mm -hmm. moment. So, your cupboard is on the cold side, yeah. and mold grows where relative humidity goes above 85% for long periods of time 
and what happens is these the surface will get cold uh, and more uh, sorry um, relative humidity is a measure of the amount that air can hold in moisture as a percentage terms okay. uh, and if it gets to 100 percent it's reached the dew point and condensation forms but at 85 percent you've got to the mold point where you get at risk of mold right. um and you and and what's happening is the um the cold wall vase is going down to mm -hmm. 13 degrees centigrade whereas uh the internal wall is what are we about 19 so it's about a 60 degree centigrade difference okay. and in humidity terms that is uh five five times um uh six is 30 percent relative humidity so if it's if you've got a normal 60 percent relative humidity in the rest of the room you'll be getting 90 90 percent in the corner uh, okay. which is just perfect conditions for mold growth just what it likes um so that's why you're getting it there okay. uh, and I'll, I'll go through lots of different solutions but the primary solution is going to come from reducing the vapor okay. and i'll look at all the different sources and how to help that but i think a secondary solution is quite an easy one and that is put insulation in uh around the side and okay. uh potentially within the cupboard itself all right using different techniques but yeah i can show you that as well have a look at this is it, oh, it's not on at the moment um, it's all the heating is very sporadic because it actually says um it is wednesday and that it's 8 17 so it says very, some very bizarre things and it's where it comes on at 8 17. Yeah. you can look you can, when there's underfloor heating you can see it on the thermal mm. imaging camera but i'm not seeing it now you, can, you get sort of loops yeah um Anyway, oh, and the other thing is do have a look at all the other videos I've put up because it'll give right. you, a, a, it will make you realise that I'm just doing it transparently to try and solve people's problems. Okay. There's lots of heat loss around here. Uh, and also you have to remember there's no heat gain in the cupboard. I um, mean, insulation is the solution, really. Insulate underneath and around. Um, you've got the cold subfloor void because... Um, you got cold air underneath the timber floor. So this is on the website. It's an AI creative website, damp.ai slash detect. Uh, I've developed it for myself, but it can be used for everyone else. Uh, I don't mind. Um, surveyors uh, and general public alike. It's f uh, using London data, but you can put a data logger outside and uh, use uh the external data if you like uh, so what we do is we bring in the the files and in this case we've got the spare room and the main room I prefer to have the vapor source as the uh, second uh, or the the nearest vapor source being the bathroom uh, or kitchen uh, but in this case we're going to do the spare room I'll show you what it's used for and then you can understand the the, the benefit of it uh, so at the time of the survey, the area behind the cupboard was 12 degrees centigrade. And, and really, that is actually incredibly important because... Um, so I started the survey at 4 p.m. I was doing... So this air, this section here is me calibrating the, the unit, so we can ignore that. But... Uh, so it's interesting, actually, insofar as... This is not showing um, mold uh, issues at this time because it's below the 80%. Uh, but I, I'll explain using this graph what is happening. And look, this blue line here is uh, more or less exactly on the external vapor line. Uh, so the dew point, this blue line here, dark blue line here, is the vapor measured as dew point it's also the temperature when condensation takes place and typically mold takes place about three degrees centigrade above that at 85 percent relative humidity i would say during the period of the survey uh, as in during the period when the sensors were up which is only for two days uh, you weren't growing any mold uh, and the vapor has been nicely extracted 
it's possible that um, people sometimes change their habits when I'm about to come. Uh, and, you know, hopefully that will be kept running and uh, in good order. The aim is to keep this blue line below the external temperature, which is this pink line here. Uh, if I uh, press the analysis, you will see that it's 91% compliant, which is which is really good. Uh, it's very rare that you... So it would only been this time, a short period of time, when it wasn't compliant with Jews Law. Um, so really good. If we look at this here, now this is interesting because this is the dew point differential, which is constantly, is hidden actually by this graph. It's constantly below zero. Uh, and the dew point differential is the difference between the dew point in the spare room compared to the dew point in the main bedroom in this case. Uh, higher above the graph and it shows there's more vapor in them in in what I call the the wet wall data uh, compared to the vapor source but in this case drying clothes in the spare room I think is your big big issue as well as the bathroom extractor fan which I fixed but it may be that you were having the uh, I'm not sure there was a window but uh, also, you probably had the door open. I wouldn't be surprised given the extractor fan wasn't working. But now that it is working, please do keep the door closed. Uh, but yes, but it shows that a lot of vapour is being generated in the spare room. To, to sum up, the key findings are that the mould was growing in behind the cupboard. It's generic. It was growing in many more places, not just behind the cupboard, but within the cupboard on, on the other side. And there was also some in the spare room. So it's an, a vapor issue. The reason why it's growing there as opposed to anywhere else is because of heat loss. There's natural heat loss in the corner. The past damp proofing treatment reduces the um, absorption of vapor, so it makes it worse. You're not getting air from the radiator in behind that gap, but you're still getting vapour in. So the best thing to do is insulate in round there, as well as reduce the vapour from from um, the bathroom, drying clothes and the kitchen. And that will be solve your problem, but do use the data loggers going forward to see what's happening.